and then we're gonna be moving on here. Now this is the general Q&A. So still gonna be the same, all Super Chats, $5 or more will be read immediately. We're gonna go through a Patreon Q&A that we had set up already. And as we're getting through that and doing the Super Chat questions, once we're done, we're hoping we will have some time here after all that to answer just general Q&A from the regular live chat for those of you who can't be a patron, you can't, you know, super chat, donate. I, you know, we totally understand. So we want to answer some of those questions too. So we're going to start off here with the Patreon and any super chats that come in, we'll answer immediately. And then we'll get to the general chat afterwards. Uh, and this can be about anything. Star Trek season two of TNG, season one, TOS, us personally, our journey here on YouTube, what's coming in the future, anything you guys want. Uh, the only thing I would ask is don't ask us about watching Star Trek overlapping episodes. Yes, we're watching it in release order. And don't ask us about will we watch this show or that show because right now we're only watching Star Trek. So that might change in the future. But anything you ask, we're just going to say, yeah, maybe one day. So it'd be kind of a waste of your question. Waste of your question. From a Tyrannus fan, can Alex think of one nice thing to say about Dr. Pulaski? Smiley face. Yeah, I can think of one. Am I going to say it? I don't know. No, she's had a lot of growth. <laughs> she's had a lot of growth this season, uh, especially, I mean, it's unfortunate that her best performance as a doctor was in the, one of the worst episodes of the season, but uh, yeah, she's grown on me a bit. That's a nice thing. She's grown on me. I don't know. Uh, Eric Singer asked, have you tried Fireball in Earl Grey yet? Uh, this actually is a good question because one idea, uh, actually my, my wife Haley had this idea, we could do for a video trying Earl Grey tea for the first time. Is that something you guys would like to see? That's a good idea, yeah. Fat produce for $2, poop, question mark. All right, thanks. <laughs> we'll take it. Um, all right. Oh. Since uh, this is on the chat for the whole world to see, all 467 of you, this one's from the lore. Any changes to the cast you'd like to see? Elevate O'Brien and Guinan the full cast member, maybe? Get rid of special guest star Pulaski? Is there a position on a starship like this that, you, that doesn't seem to have a role you'd like to see filled? Hmm. And Dr. Butt Lasers will get to your question right after this one. Thank you for the super chat. But go ahead, Alex. You can answer that one. Uh, yeah, I would yeah. love to see O'Brien and Guinan, the full-time members, with their own stuff going on. I would love to see O'Brien and Guinan interact with everybody. Similar to how we have great scenes with uh, Worf and Riker or uh, Data and Jordy. What if, dude, what if O'Brien and fucking Guinan had their own friendship for some reason? How fun would that be? Similar to the other two I just mentioned. That'd be amazing. Um, is there a position of starship like this that doesn't seem to have a role you'd like to see filled? Um, I'll, I'll let you answer. Yeah, that one I can't really think of one because it was the engineer. Yeah. And now we have that. We have so that, yeah. I can't really think of one that doesn't need to be filled, but I would just agree with the first half. Elevate O'Brien and Guiding the full cast members and get rid of Pulaski. Sorry. Uh, would love to bring back uh, Crusher there. Um, but not really for a role that hasn't been filled. Dr. Butt Lasers, you want to read his? Yes, this, was, this one is from Dr. Butt Lasers. Thank you two for this journey and giving a fresh perspective from new fans on Classic Trek. What changes would you make to improve Season 1 and 2 so far? Oh, jeez. Um, I think if you watch any of the reactions we've had, we've had on-the-spot booking fan casting. Um, oh, that's tough. Because you got to go episode by episode to explain this. You know what I mean? It's tough. Yeah, that's it, true. It's tough in a general sense because every episode is episodic and like every episode has problems. We're like, oh, I, I can see how I can fix this. But like in a general sense, I don't, I don't know how I can answer that. Yeah, I would say overall improve season two, keep Dr. Crusher. Uh, season one, um, I would just try to take more risks, not try to be TOS so much. The Naked Now is your first regular episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and, and uh, also, for both seasons, focus more on Troy and Riker as a relationship. I know they're not currently dating, 
but it's still even to this episode we just watched here a thing yep. of you know folk give some more screen time to that if you're going to make it a thing for sure for sure uh and thank you uh dr butt lasers great name and thank you for saying uh you know thanks for the journey and the fresh perspective we love it uh cm waters you want to do that one missed moment alex doing spock and wrath the there did i just do that just now did i bump into something which which spock moment cm waters and <laughs> I'm, I'm, not sure. I'm assuming the one that everyone busts our balls for, because we, you know. Where he's blind? Yeah. Spock's blind. All right. I uh, want to update on the Patreon here. Brian just edited their membership to an annual $5 tier. Michaela just became an annual $5 member. Blargan just edited their membership uh, to annual. Thank you. Joe Concepts, longtime patron, finally upgrading from the $5 to $10 tier and going annual. And David just edited from a dollar to ten dollars. I don't want to speak too soon here. I think we hit the goal, <laughs> so we're gonna to have to move around our schedule. Watch Shit. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I think even if I had made the goal higher, we would would have hit it. So I think we were destined. When you said that goal, I'm like, there's no way that's gonna happen. Uh, this has been Alex's uh, mentality with the entire channel. <laughs> there's no way this is gonna happen. I remember. Happen. I remember when you said, "Oh, people wanted the Patreon. We're not gonna make a Patreon. Are you crazy?" Uh, scroll up a little bit so I can read a. Uh... All right, uh, ten dollar donation. Thank you from Greg Quinn. This is a juvenile question, but rank the characters on where you perceive their hand to hand combat ability to be. Go. I don't think it's juvenile. Uh, I, I want to say one wharf, but I'd put Data. Data, yeah, Data's number one. Uh, two wharf, three Riker. Yeah. If we're counting season one, I'd put uh, Tasha actually number three. Okay. Um, but then yeah, Riker. And then I would say everyone, uh, everyone else, Jordy, Picard. No, I'd put Picard next because of the he's good at fencing, so he probably has some athletic ability. Um, yeah. And um, then Troy, Pulaski, Crusher, Jordy are all just below that. Uh, I think there's someone else that would be number one. So oh, uh -oh. <laughs> who is it? Chief O'Brien. Call him O'Brien. <laughs> Ninety-nine dollars ninety-nine cents from Ryan LB. 1,000. Thanks for the live stream. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, buddy. You're getting a heart from us and all of our appreciation and love. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hope to see you in the Patreon hangout if you're a patron. If not, glad that you're here now on this stream. All right. This is going to be a little bit difficult with how many people are in the chat, but we're going to do our best. You can still type whatever you want in the chat, but if you have a question for us, tag target audience like Jack Shipley just did right there. That's perfect. Thank you, Jack. Hope I could get you a little closer to your Patreon goal. Thank you very much. Uh, let me check the Patreon, actually, and see if there's any that we haven't uh, said out loud. But do exactly what Jack just did there. Tag us if you're a asking a question you want us to answer here on stream. It could be about Star Trek. It could be about anything you want. Uh, and we did, Jack. Jack Shipley. Annual five dollar me uh, member. Thank Woo! you very much. And then Kyle Stewart just upgraded from monthly ten dollars to the annual ten dollars. Thank you very much. We love you. Okay, we've got some. Uh, Alex, you can start reading them if you want. I'm just checking something over here. Uh, Dylan Bottom said at target audience. Uh, yes, that's us. JD. <laughs> <laughs> JD. Okay, guys. Pre purely hypothetical, but what cast change going forward would you accept more? Beverly back with the. Back with no data or Pulaski with no warp? What kind of question is that? Fuck. Uh, can you scroll up a bit up there? Yeah, what did he say? That's a horrible question. That's Who is it? JD? Yeah. yeah. Beverly JD, back JD with no a, data JD or Pulaski a, with no warp? JD's a menace, man. He's trying to cause uh. trouble. Pure, okay. Beverly back with no data or Pulaski with no warp. <laughs> okay, so... There was actually a question from Andrea Schmidt in the Patreon that I didn't answer, but I wanted to. It said, "Who, when we started the show, uh, I'm, I'm going to pull it up, actually. But it's about characters, so I want to I read it. Uh, but you can go ahead and answer that if you want. Um, well, I don't want Pulaski with no wharf, so I guess I... I I'm, oh, God. I don't want Pulaski with no wharf, so I, I guess I had to go with Beverly with no... Oh. All right, here it is. Andreas, after the pilot, you predicted that Alex's favorite character would be Data and Josh's Riker. Has it turned out that way? Who are your favorite characters so far? 
I don't think it has. Well, maybe for you. Who's, think, your, who's I, your favorite? I love Worf, man. Worf's my dude. Worf's my favorite. Worf is my favorite, yeah. Didn't didn't see that coming at all. Did not see that coming. I thought he would be like, oh, yeah, whatever. Guy that gets beat up. Whatever. But no, Worf is my favorite character. So Pulaski with no Worf is worst case scenario. So I'm... I'm yeah, you're right. You're I, right. I have grown severely on Data. One of my favorite characters. Um, but I can't lose Worf... After but, after seeing the emissary, but if we can have Worf and Crusher, sorry, Data. Fuck. <laughs> Damn. Shit. JD. Listen, we're not answering that question happily, okay? But he can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> that's too much of one question. All right, that's strike one, General Chat. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Any ones up there? So anything good? Yeah, we we've missed a few. I'm I'm trying to go in order, guys. I don't know how many if we're gonna be able to answer all of them. Buzzy Boo, how do you guys know each other? Met in sixth grade. Sixth grade, yep. Became and, uh, friends through wrestling and general friend group, and here just, we are. Yeah, just lucky coincidence that we hung out with the same people, lived close together, and uh, been friends ever since, mostly due to same uh, sardonic sense of humor, most likely. Uh, Joe Vett. Joe Vett, man, he's always uh, he's always got something to say with those takes, man. Oh, he's always got six or seven comments. <laughs> How different would your Shades of Earl Grey episode reaction <laughs> Grey. been had you not known ahead of time? It's disdained by fandom. That's it, a great question. It's going to affect it. It's going to affect it no matter what. I don't know. I feel like it'd be the exact same. Like, really? I, I, I was expecting bad in a different manner. But then when I saw the bad it actually was, I'm like, oh, okay. See, I think that I would have, uh, I hate to admit it, but I would say this is the first episode of TNG that I've, uh, that I've been like, oh, I've heard people talk about this. There's one other one where it's been the opposite. I've heard nothing but positive praise, and I'm not going to say what the episode is until we watch it. That's me not spoiling it for you guys. But, uh, yeah, I think it would have been different for myself. But I still wouldn't have loved it or hated it or anything. Yeah, I don't know. Your alarm went off. Uh, okay, no. Fractured Vision, target audience, how old are you guys? I don't want to dox our exact age, but we were born in the 90s. Is that fair? Yeah, I'm almost 30. Okay, well, we're 29. So that, so that, <laughs> I mean, you might as well just say it at that point. I, that could be 25 to 29, dude. You don't know. Burrito Vampire, is Josh as much of a Devon set as he seems he would be? That's for you. Uh, when it comes to setting up the camera and his exact angles to make himself look the best, yes. <laughs> See, I would say I'm more of a Diva offset. Like when? Like before shooting or after? Like when I text you when you're one minute late, where the fuck are you? <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. When I text you, hey, I'll be there uh, three minutes late. Oh, I thought the start time was this time. Yeah. Hmm, funny. <laughs> I thought we were starting at 5.30. I could have sworn our start time was 5.30. Hmm, interesting. And then I walk in, the set's not set up yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Uh. Dead Stew, your thoughts on the Enterprise D? Yeah, see, again, I just don't... It's nice. Like, it's we're, cool. We're, like... I've said I've said this about myself, but we're not big technological, you know, stuff within the universe. People like I like the more uh, philosophical humanities type stuff stories. Like I'm not one like oh this phase is different, you know, than this. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not that type of science fiction fan. Yeah. And if you are, that's great. I'm not making fun of you. It's just like I'm more of like you kind of were, but that's all right. <laughs> Well, this lightsaber, maybe with Star Wars I was, you know, 10 facts about Darth Vader's suit, but no, it's like, yeah, um, I I love the, the ship from peak performance. There, there we go. Fair how, enough. How about that? Valkyrin, whose opinion you feel get blown off the most by the rest of the staff, Worf or Wesley's? Worf's, for sure. I mean, Worf did have his day, one day with the Packlids, but, uh, but I feel like people, I don't know, Wesley's... No one tells Worf to shut up. Fair. Even Guinan told him to shut up. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, Warpig, do you think we will ever see the D separate again or not? I would hope so. I would hope so, because uh, I, fe I feel like this episode, uh, this show, not episode, this show is pretty good with continuity of abilities and continuity of characters, so I'd, I'd assume at one point there's another way they can find an excuse to separate it, but I like to keep my expectations low. P.H. Luke. Just became an annual member of the $1 tier. Thank Whoa. you, PH Luke. Thank you. Uh, CM Waters, what got you into pro wrestling? And if a follow-up is allowed, favorite wrestlers. I was introduced to wrestling by my older brother when I was four years old. Um, so that's how I got into it. And my favorite wrestlers are Kane. Uh, how many are we going to say? I'll say three. Kane, AJ Styles, and Kurt Angle would be my three. Gotcha. Uh, how I got into wrestling, I discovered it on TV in like 2008, 2009, I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. Then I found out all my friends liked it as well. 
Uh, favorite wrestler is Edge. Two other ones. Um, the Mean Street Posse. All, <laughs> All three. All three. But especially Pete Gas. <laughs> Pete Gas is my is my guy. Uh, Prof Ma, thank you for the super chat. You hate Dr. Pulaski. How do you want her to go forward? She has done growth, but what do you want of her season three? What arc for her? Well, I was hoping she'd be recast in season three, and because uh, he keeps saying special guest stars, so I'm, I'm hoping she's not going to stick around. Um, yeah, you know, so someone was giving a shit. Oh, you guys don't know what an arc is. I'm like, okay. Uh, what if every character was as unlikable as Dr. Pulaski was in her introduction? The show wouldn't be around. Characters can have arcs without without being completely insufferable fuckheads, in my opinion. As far as growth, I mean, it hasn't been much. Do more doctor stuff. Like when they when she does the doctor stuff, I'm actually like, you know, that's what I like. You're the doctor. Do doctor stuff. Yeah, I like you figuring out a problem similar to how the captain would figure out a problem with whatever it is. How does Pulaski solve her medical problems? And I feel like the worst episode showed that the best, I guess. You know, with Troy standing around there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I really liked in uh, what episode she was doing. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but there was there was a couple episodes where she did good doctor stuff. Um, I'd like to see more of that. Let's see. Jacob. Uh, are, Jacob, are there any movies coming to the theater that you're looking forward to seeing? Planet of the Apes. Uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, it's not made by Matt Reeves, but uh, you and I both love Matt Reeves, Planet of the Apes, the two films that he did. Uh, yeah, but in terms of the rest of the year, I don't know. I, I heard uh, Interstellar's coming back to the theaters. I'd love to see that in the theater for the first time because my dumb ass didn't see it until like two years ago. Uh, how about you? Uh, Planet of the Apes for sure. Honestly, not much else at this point. I'd have to look at what's coming out, but I'm, I, I have fallen off heavy. I've gotten Deadpool. So, Deadpool three should be fine. I've gotten so invested in the channel in Star Trek and others. You know, I just I really haven't kept up with the theaters that much. We saw Late Night with the Devil this last weekend. We both really liked that. Talked about that on the upcoming Patreon exclusive video podcast. Whatever this is, that'll be coming out sometime in the next week. Yep. Uh, that all tiers of patrons will get to see this episode. Um, so we'll talk about that there. Uh, Mark said, who do you think has had the most character growth? I already said Wesley. Was there anybody? Who did you say? Riker, did you say? Riker in terms of having something to do, but now that I think growth, yeah, it's got to be Wesley, I guess. Uh, Sebastian, how would you handle a two-parter episode on Patreon or YouTube? I mean, just the same. I mean, assuming that it aired as a two-parter. I mean, uh, Encounter of Four Point, we watched together. Oh, here's a better answer. However it comes on the Blu-ray. Because that's the footage we use. So yep. there you go. Encounter at Far Point was one episode on the Blu-ray. That's how we watched it. There you go. I'm um, just checking if we have any other super chats here. I thought there was a. I could have swore there was a five dollar one somewhere. Oh. Yeah, we got a couple here. Michael Nemo, five dollars. You didn't pick Rowdy Roddy Piper for favorite wrestler. Hashtag fail. A little before my time. I like the use of the hashtag in a super chat. That's cool. Um, but yeah, great. Obviously amazing. But just a little before my time to be my personal favorite. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Roddy Roddy Piper paid tribute to that one Star Trek episode with the uh, the white and the black. Uh... Oh yeah, the white and the white and the black face. Yeah. <laughs> but when but when Piper did it, it was racist. <laughs> oh, P. H. Luke, who signed up for the annual one dollar tier, just upgraded to an annual five dollar tier. What? Probably That's... signed up and realized they don't get access to anything, and so then they had to change it. That happens sometimes. Uh, that'll do it. Uh... Kyle Cooksey, $10. You want to read that one? What is your favorite Western? Do you see parallels in Star Trek? My favorite Western is The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. And I will continue that answer after this break. Uh, yeah, my favorite Westerns are Italian Westerns. Uh, spaghetti Westerns, is, as put. Uh, yeah, I love The Good, and the Bad, and the Ugly. It's uh, one of the best movies ever made. Quinn Tarantino made his entire career uh, ripping off that movie <laughs> and, other, uh, and other films. Um I see parallels in Star Trek. Well, there was that one episode from season three that had the, uh, where they were in that, uh... Yeah, that's my favorite Western, Spectre of the Gun. Spectre Star of Trek, the Gun! Star Trek TOS episode. Yeah. And then C.M. Waters, OG Planet of the Apes for movie reaction. We've gotten that question a lot. Alex has seen the movie. I haven't seen it in full, but I'm aware of the ending. Like, it's the most, one of the most famous endings of all time. So, I'm aware of it. I know that Mark Wahlberg, you know, sees a statue of... Oh! <laughs> 
That's not the original? <laughs> no, but I know the ending. So we, you know, we would like to do some Planet of the Apes content eventually, but we, there's a TV series. There is. I've seen a few episodes years ago. On TV. Yeah, like you and I are huge fans of the Matt Reeves films. Yeah, the, the new Planet trilogy was all three films excellent. Yeah, I love all three. So I feel like there's something we can do involving Planet of the Apes. I'm hoping I can see the third, the, the recent one with you at least, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, what is... uh, Gwendy Darling, uh, just curious how you two met and what led to your decision to start the channel. So we actually answered this, uh, Gwendy, your question here in the upcoming whatever this is episode that's coming. But just to recap real quick, we met in middle school, yep. became friends in high school, and the channel was Alex's idea. So I'll let him explain that. The channel was my idea, and Star Trek was my idea. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, I was... I'm a failed professional wrestler, failed actor, and I'm like, okay, what else can I do? Uh, I like watching things. Josh and I talk about everything we watch and see. So what if we made a channel to watch and discuss things together and have an excuse to do so? And after the Luke Skywalker boom of 2020, where so many reaction channels were just blowing up, I'm like, we should do this. We should try this out. I mean, we've always been trying to make some sort of content. You've had a podcast, YouTube. I've tried stuff. So let's try this. Why not? And uh, we wanted to watch Star Trek because uh, we're Letter Media and they're discussing some TNG, but it's like, okay, we're going to start from the beginning. Though. We start from TOS, and here we are, a thousand plus patrons later. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Fake Cube said, has, has everyone liked the video yet? Yeah, everyone make sure to like the stream if you haven't. And if we miss any of your general chat questions, thank you, Gwendy, for the super chat there, but if any of the general questions, if we miss them, you can throw them back in there again. We'll try to get to as many as we can here, still uh, answering the Super Chat right away. Siddhartha, are there any other TOS cameos you'd like to see in TNG? Uh, I feel like Bones was the perfect fucking, you know, uh, what do they call it? Door, uh, gateway into TNG? Like, okay, we'll throw you one bone and then you're off on your own now. Uh, let me tell you about a guy called Harry Mudd. He's the one where I'm like, uh, it would be hilarious because we've seen him in uh, two episodes of TOS and the cartoon, if he could somehow, for some dumb reason, show up in TNG, it would make my day. I, I know that's not going to happen, but it would. that's the one guy I would pick. Yeah, I don't think we need it anymore. I'm not going to, like, be pissed or anything or be mad, but it's like, just let the show live on its own, at least for a while. You know, if it's later down the line and they want to throw someone in, maybe. But, like, right now, um, I'm glad with the bones when we got. Yeah, yeah. But if one shows up, I'm not going to be mad. Um, let's see here. Husker Chuck, uh, you don't plan to do anything else for the next 25 years, correct? Keep up the good work. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah, I mean, hope that's the plan, right? And then David asks, do you think Star Trek is in your DNA? Yeah. It is now. Specifically, D, D Space Nine, apparently. Apparently. It's, apparently. It's, yeah, yeah. People are saying. It is now for sure. JD, uh... We'll get the JDs in a second, actually, right before his. Dylan, what command style do you prefer, Kirk or Picard? Oh, they're both so great. Uh, oh, that's tough. That's tough. I, I, Guys, I really love TNG. I'm going Kirk. Really? I'm sorry. I mean, but Picard has five more seasons and some movies to show me what's up. But Kirk's love for his crew. I know Picard does, too, you know, love his crew, especially in... Uh, you know, measure of a man and the uh, I, I peak performance when he, you know, defends Riker, but I'm going Kirk. I'd right rather now. that I'd rather that Kirk is my boss because he, I feel like he'd be more on the front lines with me. Yeah. You know, uh, especially season one TNG, like uh, Picard stays up top, but I feel like Kirk's the definition of like the guy, you know, like, I don't know, like the George Washington picture leading, you know, leading his crew or whatever, like front lines. Like, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go Kirk. A surprisingly moist fart. Their tenth super chat. Uh, that that brings me back, man. I remember in our some of our first streams, getting those super chats from a surprisingly moist fart. So, <laughs> thank you. You've been here a while. If you could add any TOS character into TNG as a full time character, who would it be? I'm gonna just add my own context to this and assume they mean the character as they were in TOS, not an old bones, you know, in that right. timeline. But okay. like the character as they were in TOS. Scotty. I'd probably go Ahura. But Scotty's a good choice as well. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Mm, mm, shit. Yeah, like a little... Because 
Mm. I feel like the TNG crew could use like a, a, a designated communications person. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that was like the role we, we didn't think of earlier. Yeah, that's a good point. Because it's usually just always Picard answering the right in, onto the view screen. Yeah. You know, or her with that little earpiece. You know. I miss it. Yeah. Good point. Planner Brittany says, I vote some Twilight Zone content. Well, we both love the Twilight Zone and have seen a lot of it. In terms of first-time watches, I'm sure if we dug through the episode list, there would be some that we haven't seen. There's probably some good war episodes. Oh, yeah, the war episodes. My favorite my favorite Josh quote ever. Like, there's, there's two types of Twilight Zone episodes. Good episodes and the ones about war. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah, no, or maybe some like really fan, you know, really popular ones that even if we've seen them before, I mean, it could have been years since we've watched it, maybe for like a Halloween or some type of special occasion, we can watch one of those. Yeah, for sure. Put ourselves in black and white as well. Yeah. Um, Kenny Waffles, this is a good question. Do you want to read that one? From Kenny Waffles, with Red Letter Media lengthy but enjoyable reviews on TNG, have some episodes been spoiled for you, do you think? That's a good, uh... There are some things where I know they've been spoiled, where they've been sticking in the back of my mind. I don't know what episodes they are, uh, but I know some things have, but I, even at this moment, I'm like, I can't remember, and that makes me happy. They're, like, some things like the Tasha Yar thing, where I don't think about it until it happens, and I'm like, oh, shit. But as of right now, my head's pretty clear. Maybe one thing from Star Trek Six, but besides that one thing, I know nothing about Star Trek Six. but... Yeah. yeah, and I haven't watched any of the Red Letter Media videos, so I know nothing, uh, and Alex does not, you know, spoil anything for me, so the Tasha Yar is a pretty good example of what's probably going to happen in the future when something comes up that you already knew, uh, you know, you'll tell me afterwards, uh, you know, there's been a couple things even in, like, the TOS movies that you knew about that you told me about afterwards once they came on screen, and you're like, oh, yeah, so uh, that's probably going to happen, but if you had not watched those videos, we probably never would have watched Star Trek to begin with, so it's a hey, catch-22. Double-edged sword there, yeah. so... Can someone explain the difference between Catch-22 and Double-Edged Sword? I know that they're different sayings, but we use them pretty interchangeably. Jack Shipley. Um, Repost. Do you know about the black squares yet? Have you seen them? Are you talking about the Instagram black squares? Yeah. I don't know, uh, I don't know of any other ones. Yeah, I, I posted one. <laughs> okay, Back. let's move on. Brian Moore. Do you think holodecks and replicators would save or ruin humanity? Ooh, that's a good one. Holodecks would ruin it. Holodex would ruin it. Uh, everyone would be in there. You ever seen that movie Surrogates? Yeah. It would be like that, I feel like, with the Holodex. Uh, replicators oh. would probably save a lot of lives if you could replicate, I mean, like organs and stuff and yeah. replicate. But I think Food, Holodex, yeah. as much as we love the Holodex, keep that on a starship out in space because you put those on Earth, we're done. We're yeah. post. Only give that to the, the most advanced military that deserves it, not to everyone. The, the uh, astronauts were isolated. I would not. Isolated. Yeah. Exactly, the astronauts that are isolated from the real world. Let them have that to enjoy. But regular people, no. Because I would not leave that thing. All right. CM Waters, this is a good one. Any ranking of the uniforms in Trek? TOS, TMP, Movies 2 through 4, and TNG. I'm putting Movies 2 through 4 at the bottom. Sorry, guys. Uh, TOS, TNG, the Movies. Yeah, same thing, except I would even differentiate TMP, gray uniforms, and then oh, and yeah. then movies two that, through that's four. That's right, TMP was its own thing, yeah. But yeah, TOS is still the best, I think. They got rid of, you know, the TNG, the, it brings the color back, but it's it's a, still a little bit, you know, still not bit. as vibrant. Yeah. Retro, what are your predictions for Riker's character arc by the end of TNG based on what you've seen so far? I think by the end of the show, he gets really, like, interested in the supernatural, and he starts researching, like, these... <laughs> <laughs> fabled stories and he wants to know which ones are real or not that'd be my guess he discovers uh a cabin at the end of the at the end of time like at the end of the loki season's finale and he walks in on these hallways and talks about all these stories but and uh, in, in all actuality um i just hope each step gets some similar to i don't know something like a smallville where it gets closer and closer to being superman but never becomes Superman, where hopefully Riker comes closer and closer to becoming Captain, but never does. And but we only he's only becomes Captain at the at the very end, but then the show ends. That'd be my guess. I don't know. 
oh, like Dwight in the office becomes the captain. And yeah. The, and the, yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know if you've ever seen. Sm I haven't. But Small I haven't seen Smallville. But, but I know what it he is. He never becomes Superman until like. The, yeah. 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 It's about him before. Yeah. 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 That's fair. Um, Sid Hartha. Since you brought up uniforms, do you want the TNG uniforms to change? If so, how? Eh. Uh, More color, but beyond that, eh. They're little, fine. They're more, good. A little more vibrant, I guess. I don't know. Uh, whatever hurts uh, Jonathan Frigg's back less, I guess. Oh, and we've been asked about the maneuvers. Do you know what they are? Not here. We've just been asked about, asked about the brake maneuver and Picard maneuver. Do you know what they are? Uh, I know no. what they are. Can you tell me? Well, I think I know what they are. You guys tell me if I'm right or wrong. I I wasn't spoiled, but I'm pretty sure the Riker maneuver is when he swings his leg over a chair when he sits down. And then okay. I think and then I think the Picard maneuver is when he does this. He always does this with his uniform. <laughs> does he? Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to look out for that now. Yeah, I'm correct. It took me two seasons to figure that out. I, I can't remember what episode it was recently. I think in the for the Riker maneuver, I figured it out when he swings his leg over the chair in the Guinan scene. When he goes to talk to Guinan at the table in 10 forward with Wesley, he like swings his leg over the chair. And then I started noticing that. And then for Picard, I don't remember what... If it was peak performance or what episode it was, but there's one where he like sits in the captain's chair and he's like getting ready to like do something and he just goes, "Oh, you know what? Now that you say, I am thinking, I'm like, oh, that's totally in my head. yeah, that that's that's definitely happened, yeah." Uh, but still wrong about the uniforms. Okay. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> cool, cool, that, cool. 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 That. Cool. 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 Um, Prof Moff, thank you for the super chat. Um, I'm gonna make sure I didn't miss any. Also, um, R Romanians. WTF, are they a thing? Are they just a distraction? Are they, uh, what? Romanians? What is that? I don't even know what he's talking Did about, dude. Did you mean... I'm too deep in Fireball to know what that Romulans? means. Romulans? Did you... Did we say Romanians on accident? I, I, I might have... Retro says, thanks for the stream. Congrats on finishing season two. Hey, thank you, Retro, uh, for being here and appreciate it. Uh, Cashflow Hustles. You guys know why Khan didn't have a direct physical fight with Kirk? Because... Of scheduling. It's not because it's a Moby Dick metaphor, and it's not because of what other excuse. It was because of scheduling. Ricardo Montalban, William Shatner, and the director of the movie all wanted them to have an altercation. It didn't work out. Uh, target audience, do you like Star Trek, says Dylan? No, hate it. <laughs> I hate being here. <laughs> yeah, no, obviously, yeah, we love it, yeah. I think there's a... Paul, I don't think you sent a super chat. Oh, one just came through from you. Okay, oh, look, at <laughs> look at that. Oh, how about that? Uh-oh. Oh, Ten dollars. Thank oh, you very much. You're the type. Of, are you the type of customer that orders like a huge entree at a restaurant, then two minutes after, hey, I, I placed an order. <laughs> Just kidding. Re regarding Star Trek continues. If you're not okay with new actors playing the characters, logically, would that mean you're definitely against the Chris Pine crap? C Pine was crap because it's not Trek. Uh, so, from my understanding, we we kind of talked about this before, but from my understanding, the Chris, the uh, new Trek, as it was called, Trek 2009 is a new timeline. It is not supposed to be William Shatner. That's the difference. Uh, it's kind of like the difference between like Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire are both Spider-Man, but they're different Spider-Man. That's kind of what I believe Chris Pine and William Shatner is. But Star Trek Continues is like, correct me if I'm wrong, supposed to be William Shatner. Like it's as if the entire show was recast and the story continued, hence the name. That's what kind of was, was a, we made us a bit hesitant about. I saw some clips. It looks good, but it's like not something I'm interested in. But hey, one day when we run out of Star Trek and we're you know desperately trying to cling on to our viewership, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll one watch day it. when we're in our forties begging at TikTok <laughs> Live for money, yeah, for, for galaxies. Yeah, send a galaxy, guys. Send a galaxy. We'll watch Star Trek. We, we pause the show until we get a galaxy. We'll continue. <laughs> send a, one more viewer in the live. We'll continue the. All right, a surprisingly <laughs> moist fart. Another one. Oh boy. Frakes wasn't Roddenberry's first choice as Riker. Do you know who was? Hint, we've seen him in the show already. Wasn't it, uh... It wasn't Brent, was it? It was someone who guessed... Oh, it was the guy who played Outrageous O'Connor. Oh, oh, yeah. Outrageous. William Campbell, right? Yeah, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Yeah, O'Connor, yeah. All right. Esoteric Video says, dang, it's not letting me super chat. Well, you can you can still ask a question. Esoteric Videos, we'll try to answer it. Uh, 
And then we'll probably wrap up here and jump over to the Patreon. So if you are a patron, make sure to pay attention in the next few minutes of the Patreon. We'll post the Patreon exclusive link for that stream. Michael Nemo. Pine is supposed to be Shatner in a different timeline. Toby is Holland in a different universe. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> so it's the same, same thing. I would say Holland is Toby. Don't don't say Toby is Holland. Don't don't disrespect. All him. right, all right. <laughs> don't disrespect my childhood hero. Uh, CM Water said had a two dollar you may have missed. I'll check. Dead Stew says are those chairs comfy? Only slightly. They are only slightly. Jacob D says the new logo looks fantastic. Who designed it? I designed it with some help from the internet. Uh, let's see if I missed a two dollar here. CM Waters, what's the air wing velocity of an unladed swallow? What's no. the air wing velocity of an unladed swallow? I don't know that. Have you seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Yeah, yeah. But do I know references like that? No, I've seen it twice. I do because I'm smart. I don't know about that. I don't think either of us are smart. Oh. <laughs> 